Hey, look, it's the double wide dudes. Ooh, watch out. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Double Wide Dudes. I appreciate you guys tuning in, as always. Uh, sitting here with the one and only AP. How we doing, man? Man, I'm. Uh, I-, I thought downloads were cool. Mousetrap. How about last night? Yeah, the tech trek. Yeah, that was fun, man. The fiesta is an awesome time here in San Antonio, and it's cool that San Antonio and, and the local tech community decided to throw this this little tech trek that they had. Yeah, it was the first one ever. I, I definitely think they need to do it again. Yeah, they do. I, I mean, with the success of this year, uh, I'm sure it become a regular routine for them. Um, a lot of companies are moving here to bring their business to Texas, and it's given the local residents a platform for them to get their ideas out and really be able to launch their products here in San Antonio. And Geekdom has really paved the way for this tech ecosystem that's happening here on Houston Street in downtown San Antonio. Yeah, and I mean, they've been a huge part of uh, getting our company going. I'd, I'd be the first to say that. But it's just really cool to um, surround ourselves with all these entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and um, other folks with ideas they want to see put into action. And um, more than anything, learning how to um, use technology, Mousetrap, to uh, not only make our company better, but more importantly, uh, make, make the whole home buying experience and shopping experience better for our customers. Yeah, just like on Tuesday, you know, when they were looking at the VR goggles. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, that that cool is a, a lot of folks had never walked through a home with these VR goggles. So, um, you know, just things like that where where we can make it easier for folks to shop in the comfort of their home and and um, be able to do more research before they actually engage someone from a different company. Mm-hmm. I get really excited when I get a chance to show them. Um, you know, their faces is is, is yeah. pretty priceless when, when they're able to see or envision what the house would look like. For sure. It's definitely my favorite part. Yeah, and, and Johnny was also, remember him telling us about the HoloLens? I mean, those new uh, Microsoft goggles that's basically going to transform augmented reality to an everyday thing. Yeah. I mean, one, one day we're going to wake up, mousetrap, and we're going to have customers picking out colors from their couch with yeah. these, these goggles and, and really customizing their home, uh, which I think is just going to be awesome. Yeah, a lot of new technologies are, are making things easier, AP, and... and there's no reason we can't apply these to the mobile home industry. Exactly. Exactly. And that's uh, that's been probably the biggest benefit of us working down there off Houston Street in the Ram building. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was really cool to meet a lot of other folks that are in the tech scene that um, aren't necessarily um, there at Geek Tim. We got to meet Iris, um, who just published that awesome uh, article she wrote about mm-hmm. us. Um, and more or less how we're, we're using technology to make our industry and our, our customers' buying experience better. So... Definitely, uh, definitely thank her for helping us to share our story. Yeah, and, and I remember reading on, on the Rivard report uh, when we were doing our research um, that San Antonio was really projecting to add, what was it, I think 600,000 people. Yeah, just over. Yeah, by 2030. Um, it's a lot of people. It's I mean, a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, you can only fit 18,000 in the, uh, the AT&T Center to watch yeah. the Spurs kick butt in the playoffs. So. <laughs> yeah. And we were talking about um, just finding affordable housing for these people. Right. You know, um, the north part of town is going to be built up. It's already overcrowded. Um, the west side has, has its development. So really down in the east side um, is what the city's next focus is, isn't it? Right. East east of San Antonio, downtown San Antonio, south of San Antonio. And um, that that's really why it's so important that we continue to work to change this whole stereotype and and uh, the myths that surround our industry. Mm-hmm. You know, manufactured homes um, play a huge role in providing affordable housing, mm-hmm. and um, and I think we're really going to have to leverage this resource um, to to meet the demands of all the folks looking to move into our our town and in our city here. Right. I mean, that's it has to be an option. I mean, there's uh, there's already mobile home parks right. here here in the city of San Antonio and, and really all over. But as far as new undeveloped properties, you know, the city doesn't allow for these mobile homes um, to be developed into new neighborhoods, right? Yeah. And, and Austin just went through this, really. I mean, all the people that influxed into uh, Austin, one, it's it's overpopulated. I mean, the city's beautiful, but 
I mean, when's the last time you've been in Austin? That traffic is ridiculous. I um, I really try to go there as little as possible. Sitting on 35 for two <laughs> hours is uh, is never any fun. Yeah, and, and you were talking about a three-mile span right there on 35. Yeah. <clears throat> but No, but yeah, but Austin just went through this. Um, parts of their cities where families had lived for generations. Um, they really got built up, and with the surge of, of new people coming to the city, uh, and the drastic increase in, in property taxes and all that, it really drove out these people that they've been there for generations, um, you know, a place to where they used to call their home. Right. 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 And, and that's exactly what we don't want to see happen here in our city. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the need for new considerations for manufactured homes and in the zoning of this city, I think is going to be critical in um, helping to prepare this city for the, the wave of folks that are looking to move here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we, as a community, I think really have that small town feel. That's that's my favorite thing about yeah. living in San Antonio, um, big city amenities with with a small town friendly feel. And I, I just really don't want to see that be lost. Mm-hmm. You know, if you look at the bigger cities, New York, Houston, um, even Austin at this point, the folks that drive the city, first responders, uh, maintenance crews, folks that keep our community looking good and and and, and looking clean, um, they can't afford to live. In these cities that that they're they're keeping alive basically, yeah. and they're having to drive in an hour hour and a half, um, um, just to come to work. And mm-hmm. and I just, I, I really would hate to see that happen to this town that I know you and I both love so much. Mm-hmm. And you know, I look at all these vacant lots on the south and east side that um, you know, they're just sitting there. They're sitting there empty. They've been on the market forever. Um, frankly, no site builder is ever going to touch these in the near future mm-hmm. um, because the resale prices in those neighborhoods are a little bit lower. Um, and, and that's where manufactured housing, I think, provides a great solution. Um, but because of zoning and outdated stereotypes, um, it is just not possible at this point in time. Yeah. And just recently, I was talking with a friend uh, who's thinking about moving up from the valley. Um, he was looking at those lots. Those four or five thousand dollar pieces of property in the South Town area, um, he was really interested in those, and, and we were talking about what type of home he's going to put on there, what could he build, and he was talking about the containers, um, you know the containers, right? You see yeah. those those cool posts, and those things are super cool. Yeah, and in my head, it popped in. The mobile homes is is the best viable option, right? Yeah, it it, it needs to be. Yeah, um, but unfortunately, without some change in zoning, it, it's just never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, on that note, that, that reminds me of that article that we read uh, about Austin. Um, just recently, they were having that, that town hall meeting about making more mobile home community parks, um, you know, because these developers are coming in, buying out the ones that are there, and, and really pushing out the people that already live there. Right. And, and these homeowners that already own the home, they, they need a place to move their home to. Yeah, um, it's kind of sad. Yeah, and I remember the local residents talking about how, you know, like, oh, the the crime rate's going to increase, the, the foreclosure rate's going to go up, um, you know, things along that manner. Right, right. A, a lot of misconceptions out there, and I think that's why this this mobile home myth of trailer trash is really so important. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like we heard from Leroy last week, the folks that live in manufactured homes, to, to them it's funny. You know, yeah. they, they know better. They know the truth. Um, but it, it's really hurting cities exactly like Austin. Um, and it's very sad when, when developers come in and they buy out these mobile home parks and you've got folks that own their home, um, they own it outright and, and, and now they have no place to put it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really important that San Antonio prepares for the growth of all these new people that are coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, but more important than anything, we've, we've as a city, have got to make sure we're taking care of our people, our, the San Antonio residents that make this place what it is. And um, these stereotypes um, that, that people have, and I understand wanting to protect your family and, and your investment, but unfortunately it's translated into policy that's just been made with simple bad information. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there, there's actually been several recent studies out there that seem to indicate the foreclosure rate on manufactured homes is actually less than that of a traditional site built. And when you really stop and think about it, if a home is more affordable, mm-hmm. if your mortgage payment is is something you can afford, well, then you're going to continue to pay on it. Yeah, that's interesting, man. More uh, more foreclosure rates in a in a site build home, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've been doing this eight years, and even that one caught me a little off yeah. guard. Yeah. What What about the concerns over crime, AP? 
You know, um, I actively tried to find some information on this. Um, I, I could not find any studies or reports that seemed to indicate uh, there, there were more crime in manufactured home neighborhoods mm-hmm. um, or anything even close. I, I think it really has more to do with the, uh, the stereotypes that have been around forever and um, what, what Hollywood seems to show in movies and TV um, more, more than actual facts. Yeah, like that show uh, Trailer Park Boys. Have right. You seen it? Yeah, those those guys. Are. <laughs> it's I mean it's a funny show, but uh it's it's popular on Netflix and right there Hollywood just put out the stigma where these mobile home community parks there's uh, people that don't have jobs and and sell sell drugs. Right. <laughs> right. And and that's um again that couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah. Yeah, the the most interesting statistic that stood out to me when when we were doing our research AP was uh, the effects that home ownership has on children, right? yeah. all, all sorts of things seem to improve. Uh, really, when when their parents raise their kids in a home that they own, or some of the things that we saw had an increase was uh, kids had a higher graduation rate. Right, right? there's a, I believe a, a decrease in in the chance of incarceration, uh, chances of young teens getting pregnant, and yeah, with the, with the higher chance of graduating, uh, these kids had a chance of proper employment. Right. Right. It seems to me that really the the stability of a permanent residence AP is going to be uh, more important than than the home itself. Right. Right. Yeah. Th- there's a lot of confidence instilled in kids when you know they they know where they're going to sleep every night mm-hmm. and um, keeping the same group of friends at, at school as as you come up uh, elementary school, yeah. middle school, and high school and and um, what what the research and the psychologists were saying that you know kids just feel more stable and more secure. Than if ha- they're having to bounce around from you know apartment to uh, to rental homes or whatnot. So really, anything we can do to um, increase the rate of home ownership in this mm-hmm. city, you know, manufactured home, starter home, wh- whatever it is, um, I-, I think the ultimate goal needs to be um, helping as many families as we can achieve the dream of home ownership. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean that reminds me, man. My closest group of friends are friends that I met in, in elementary. Yeah. Right. And we all live next to each other. Uh, we all ride bikes to each other's houses. And they're really 25 plus years of friendship. And I really consider them my family. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it sounds like that, that that's what needs to be done here in San Antonio. Right. We, we need to find a way to help uh, these families that are going to be moving here, um, provide a stable and safe environment for their children. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that really all starts with finding viable alternatives to affordable housing, including maximizing the benefits of the factory built housing industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like Leroy said in the last episode, AP, uh, his door opens uh, just like everyone else's. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, that does it for this episode, guys. Uh, Tune into the next one where uh, we're going to be talking about uh, what a start a home really looks like and uh, how the dream of home ownership doesn't necessarily mean uh, you need to get the home of your dreams the first go around. Uh, Thanks again, and we'll talk to you in the next one.